Julie Reginsky for FoxNews.com. From Stanford to Princeton and Rutgers, professors, students, and alumni alike are calling for their universities to become sanctuary campuses. That means the school would be a safe space where undocumented students can study without the threat of deportation. This comes in the days since President-elect Donald Trump's victory. On a platform that includes promises to deport millions of undocumented, undocumented immigrants across the U.S. Joining me now to talk about it, Lindsay Lee. Lindsay Lee, excuse me, she served as the president of her class at Princeton for four consecutive years and was then elected as alumni class president. And Kevin Washoe, he was the executive director of the Philadelphia 2016 host committee for the Democratic National Convention and currently works at Cozen O'Connor Public Strategies. Lindy, so tell me, what's happening on Princeton campuses now? And is it really challenging to be able to lead at a time like this? Are people generally scared or exhilarated, or what's the mood of Princeton right now? Thank you so much for having me of today. Course. I think there's a great deal of uncertainty. People are just trying to study and contribute to the community and eventually contribute to our economy, but they're living in fear of deportation and perhaps even being sent to um, detention centers under inhumane conditions. These students are only here to study and they are eligible for protection under DACA, which stands for Deferred um, Action for Childhood Arrivals. And they came here not intentionally breaking our country's immigration laws. They came here as a result of their family's actions. And so they're just trying to pursue an education. I don't think it's fair to them for us to uproot their lives. But through an executive order, obviously, President-elect Trump could in the future get rid of DACA, and, and, and these people have a lot of uncertainty in their lives. Exactly. The question is, the definition of sanctuary campuses is actually kind of um, in, um, unformed right now because we don't really know what it entails. Um, so we don't, colleges aren't, um, they're saying that they're not necessarily going to cooperate with federal authorities, they're not going to offer up these students unless there's a violent crime involved. And as far as I know, there aren't any cases. No, I've, I spent my childhood partying on the Princeton campus and I can tell you the worst you have is underage drinking and that's about it. Um, Kevin, Philadelphia is maintaining its sanctuary city status despite the president-elect saying he might cut funding. Yeah for cities that do that. What's, what are the challenges for the city? Well, I think you're seeing it all over the country. And I think the biggest question that I think we need to ask ourselves as a country, how did it get to this point? And I think if you really peel back the onion on this is procrastination. I think when you procrastinate and you don't tackle tough decisions, this is what happens. And I think what we've seen, not just on both, on both sides really, the extreme left and the extreme right, you know, in many ways have a stranglehold on, uh, on the debate. And I think what we need to do is bring the temperature down. And I think we're, whether it be sanctuary cities, sanctuary campuses, there's enough stress on, on both entities to have to deal with this, and I think the added burden to deal with this issue in a time of uh, real tough inaction by the federal government has been pretty sad. I mean, what, what could you do technically if the city ultimately has to make a decision between receiving federal funds that may potentially be cut off with a Republican president and a Republican Congress mm -hmm. acting in concert? What is the mayor of Philadelphia or anybody else, any of these cities, Bill de Blasio here yeah. in New York, San Francisco, what do they do? What practical remedies do they well, have? Well, you know this because you see it in, in, in New York. The mayor of a city is a very, very tough job. It's probably one of the t most t difficult jobs in, in public service. Okay. And the added stress in making cities safe, just on a macro level, um, I think that the take that funding and, and withhold it from cities is only going to make us more unsafe. When you walk down the street here in New York, if you have 60 or 70 or 80 million dollars or how, whatever the number is, be taken out of your city, it's not going to make anyone more safe. And I think that the cities that even have to deal with this issue is, is really sad. And I think we had an opportunity, as you know, in 2013 to pass really tough uh, comprehensive immigration reform. Uh, it never got to the House. And that, if you look at it, in terms of border security, strengthening of border, border guards, a whole host of things. You know, life's about compromise, right? We're going to have Thanksgiving dinner around the country, yeah. and you go to your family dinner table, you're not going to agree on everything, but you have to compromise. Somehow, the federal government's the only entity in the world that doesn't realize <laughs> that you actually point. have to compromise in life to get something done. So if we could do that and bring the temperature down and look to other people that are dealing with this issue on a daily basis. You look at, you know, Bishop DiMarzio from Brooklyn, who's doing amazing things that has been working with that community uh, for, for years, and I think we just got to get more realize that uh, the fact is a lot of these immigrants they have already put in twelve billion dollars into social security i mean there 's things practical things as a country that we have to deal with, and if you don 't tackle it, I think uh, we procrastinate way too long and unfortunately we 're seeing the results of inaction where both sides are, are, are heated and unfortunately, I think we all wish that uh, the temperature could be dropped you down know, a little bit interesting Lindy, to that point, Princeton itself as a university really can 't do much right you have to work with Princeton. Mm -hmm. Borough Township, I know they just merged, but the city of Princeton essentially to, to, to do that. 
Has there been any contact between the mayor of Princeton? I actually know her well. She's a, she's a very progressive mayor. And so as a result, is she somebody that you can work with as a university trying to do this on its own? Do you have to cooperate with not just uh, the city itself, but also maybe Mercer County where the university is, the state of New Jersey? How does the university do this without having to enfold a lot of people in the mix who may not necessarily ideologically agree with you? The state of New Jersey obviously has a, exactly. is a governor who, who thinks very differently then Princeton is led by either as a university or, or the town itself. So how do, you, how do you reconcile those two? That's such an excellent point. I think we're looking for ways that will allow us to comply with federal regulations and at the same time support our students. And one avenue is to provide um, a network of alumni who are willing to support these students through pro bono legal assistance in helping them, guiding them through the immigration process. Another thing is to provide um, a facility on campus that students can go to to get their questions answered. Because right now, we just don't even know. President-elect Trump said he's going to deport two to three million people, and presumably he's going to target the hardened criminals. But the thing is, we have a federal database of these students, so that information is readily available for federal authorities to you know, investigate. So we're a little... Um, we, we just want to provide a measure of uncertainty, measure of certainty for these students so they can proceed with their lives. And at the same time, I think no one is interested in tearing people's lives apart. And that's to your point. Um, I'm sure the leadership in Princeton, both university-wise and at the municipal level, they just want our communities to thrive. You know, a house divided against itself cannot stand. I'm, that's what President Lincoln said. It's a timeless um, principle that we should uphold. Kevin, you know, there are critics who obviously see sanctuary cities, first of all, circumvent federal law, secondly, foster crime. You have the case Stanley incident in San Francisco, which a lot of people point to as something that was a tragic result of an illegal immigrant, undocumented, undocumented immigrant coming here, a, a hardened criminal who was allowed to basically be out because of the sanctuary city status in San Francisco. What do you say to people like that? Well, well, first of all, what a heartbreaking situation and should have never gotten to that point. And I, but I think the reality of the situation, after you scrape away all the rhetoric, is that we really have a broken system. And when you have a broken system, you have to fix it. And we need our leadership in the federal government to finally stand up and say, we're going to get this done. And you may not get everything you want here, you may not get everything you want here, but if we don't get something done, this, this is going to happen, this rhetoric is going to happen, and we're going to be in a position not to focus on a lot of other issues we all know that are going to face the country. And I think that's the point I think we need to, we need to get to. And hopefully people will, will do that and um, cooler heads will prevail and uh, we can keep families together and our communities safe. All right, Lindsay Lee, Kevin Washoe, thank you so much. Um, for more on this story, stick with, stick with us at foxnews.com. I'm Julie Roginski.